Welcome back, everybody, to another deep dive. This time, we're taking a look at something pretty powerful, uh, healing the inner child. Mm. So we've got this excerpt from a longer piece. Right. And it breaks down this whole idea of healing from, you know, childhood trauma mm -hmm. into four steps. Yeah. And what's interesting is it's not about placing blame. It's more about understanding, mm -hmm. processing, and actually finding a way to move forward. Yeah. I think that's a really nice way to frame it. Yeah. Because it can be so easy to get stuck in that blame cycle. Absolutely. And it, it doesn't really lead to any sort of healing. Right. What I find really interesting about this piece is that it lays out such a, a structured path. Yeah. It's like, you know, when we think about confronting past trauma, it can feel really overwhelming. Oh, for sure. Is so having these steps, it's like having a roadmap, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Instead of just wandering around hoping you'll... You'll find your destination. Exactly. So uh, the first step on this roadmap that they lay out is acknowledging the injustice. Right. And I think this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Okay. The source really emphasizes the importance of allowing yourself to feel the anger mm -hmm. and the resentment from those experiences yeah. without guilt. And, you know, remember, we're talking about the perspective of the child who went through these things. Right. Not the adult you are now. I think that is where a lot of people get tripped up mm. because we are we are taught to suppress those negative emotions. Right. To to be strong and to move on. Exactly. But why is it so crucial to actually feel that anger and resentment? It's interesting because, you know, a lot of us are taught to just stuff those emotions down. Right. But uh, they don't really go away, do they? No, no, they don't. It's like trying to hold a beach ball underwater. It takes constant effort, and eventually it's going to burst back up Ugh, Yeah. with even more force. Definitely. And that's what suppressed emotions can be like. Mm -hmm. You know, They don't just vanish. Mm -hmm. They can manifest in other areas of our lives. Right. Anxiety, unhealthy relationships, all sorts of things. That makes sense. So the source uses this really vivid analogy. Um, imagine a soldier crawling through darkness and danger. Okay. And finally reaching safety. Yeah. That's your inner child surviving. Wow. Honoring those experiences, the pain, the unfairness. Right. That's how we begin to heal. Yeah, that, that analogy is so powerful. And it really makes you realize we're not talking about dwelling in negativity. Right. It's about validating what that child went through. Exactly. So, okay, so how do we, how do we actually tap into those emotions, especially if we've spent, you know, years pushing them down. Well, you know, there's no one size fits all answer. Sure. But there are definitely tools and techniques that can help. Yeah. Therapy is a great option, of course. Yeah. Having a trained professional to guide you through that process can be really invaluable. Sure. But there are also things you can do on your own, like journaling. Oh, I love journaling. Yeah. It's such a great way to just get those thoughts and feelings out of your head mm -hmm. and on the paper. Absolutely. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, perfectly crafted prose or anything. No, just a stream of consciousness, right? Exactly. Yeah. Just let it flow. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, another thing that can be really helpful is to express yourself creatively. Oh, interesting. Whether that's through art, music, dance, whatever speaks to you. Yeah. It's all about finding a healthy outlet for those emotions. That makes sense. So we're, we're confronting the injustice. We're, we're feeling those raw emotions. Then what? Well, then we move on to step two. Okay. And this is where it starts to feel a little more empowering. Okay. We shift our focus from anger right. to appreciating the strength it took to survive those difficult experiences. I love that because we've all faced challenges in our childhoods. Absolutely. And this step really encourages us to look back and say, wow, I got through that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's no small feat. No. But Especially when we consider things from the child's perspective. They did the best they could with the resources they had at the time. Right. So appreciate that strength, that will to survive, because it's a big part of who you are today. Mm -hmm. So we've acknowledged the pain. We recognize the strength. What's next? Step three delves into forgiveness. And I think this is where it gets really interesting. Okay. Because this has two parts. Okay. Forgiving your parents. Yeah. And forgiving yourself. Forgiveness, especially when it comes to parents. Oh, absolutely. It can be such a loaded topic. It really can be. What what insights does this um, the source offer on that? Well, I appreciate that this source takes a really compassionate approach. Okay. You know, it suggests that most parents, they were doing the best they could mm -hmm. with their own limitations and their own experiences. Yeah. And, and of course, this doesn't excuse their behavior. Right, right. But it, it encourages you to try to understand the context of their actions. That's such an important distinction to make because it's not about, you know, condoning hurtful behavior. No, not at all. 
it's about trying to see the bigger picture. Exactly. And and here's where it gets really personal, you know. Think about how holding on to that resentment has impacted your life. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it has. Maybe it's showing up in your relationships or, or your self-worth. Mm -hmm. Maybe even your physical health, you know. Forgiveness, it isn't about saying what happened was okay. Right. It's about freeing yourself from that burden. Exactly. And that freedom, it applies to forgiving yourself too. Mm, that's a good point. You know, acknowledge that you were operating with the knowledge and the resources you had back then. Mm. Recognize how much you've grown since then. Let go of any guilt or shame that you've been carrying. I think that's such a critical point. Yeah. We often judge our past selves by the standards that we have today. Oh, for sure. And and that's not fair, you know. It's about recognizing how far we've come mm. and offering ourselves that same compassion that we try to extend to others. Right. And, you know, forgiveness, it's not a one-time event. Right. It's a process, mm. you know. It's a journey, yeah. Exactly. And there will be days when it feels easier than others. Yeah, yeah. And that's okay. So we've navigated these, the complexities of forgiveness. Yeah, what's yeah. what's the final step in this whole process? All right. Well, step four is where it gets really thought-provoking. Okay. It's all about defining your identity. Ooh, interesting. And it asks this question. Yeah. Who are you in LW? Mm. You know, are you still clinging to the identity of the wounded child? Right. Or are you ready to embrace a stronger, more empowered self? That's that's such a powerful question. It is, isn't it? It forces us to confront how we define ourselves. Yeah. Even on a subconscious level. Absolutely. So what does this what does the source have to say about making that shift? Well, the source gets pretty real here. It says, if you like seeing yourself as a helpless child, that's your right. Okay. But it will lead to suffering. So it's mm -hmm. kind of a wake up call, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. to examine the labels that we're holding on to right. that might not be serving us anymore. That makes sense. Think about it. What stories about yourself are you clinging to that might be holding you back? Ooh. Yeah. Maybe it's the belief that you're not good enough. Right. Or that you're always going to be the victim. Yeah. Yeah. You know, those sorts of things. It's it's almost like we're wearing these these old clothes mm. that don't fit anymore. Yeah. But but we're afraid to let them go. Exactly. And and this step is about recognizing that we have the power to, you know, create a new wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. To 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 create a new narrative for ourselves. It is. It's about recognizing that we have the power to choose our own narrative. Exactly. We can choose to be defined by our past hurts. Or we can choose to embrace a narrative of resilience and growth yes. and self-compassion. This is where the source's message becomes truly empowering. Yeah. It's saying, hey, you've come this far. You yeah. survived. You did. And now you have the power to choose who you want to be. Absolutely. But how do we make that shift? That's a great question. And that's what we're going to be talking about in part two. Okay. So stay tuned. I can't wait. Okay. So we've... We've laid out these four steps to healing. Right. But now comes the real work. Yeah. Right? Putting them into practice. Yeah. And I, I imagine it can feel a little overwhelming at first. It can. You know, it's like, yeah. okay, I get the concepts. Yeah. But where do I even begin? It's like having all the ingredients for an amazing meal, but no recipe to follow, you know? That's a great analogy. So how do we, how do we translate these ideas into tangible actions? Where do we start? Well, first, remember that healing is not a race. It's a journey. Right. It's not about flipping a switch and suddenly everything's better. Mm. It takes time and patience and a commitment to showing up for yourself, even on the tough days. That makes sense. It's like, you know, training for a marathon, you don't expect to run 26 miles on day one. Exactly. You start small, you build strength and endurance over time. But when it comes to, you know, healing emotional wounds... Where do we even begin to take those first steps? Well, therapy can be a really powerful tool. Yeah. You know, working with a therapist can provide a safe and supportive space to explore those emotions, mm -hmm. process those difficult memories, and develop healthy coping mechanisms. It's like having a guide on this journey. Exactly. Someone to help you navigate those challenging terrains and offer support along the way. I like that. But what about, you know, what about those who might not have access to therapy or just aren't ready for that step yet? Are there yeah. are there other things that, that they can do? Absolutely. Journaling is an incredibly powerful tool. Yeah. It allows you to give voice to those bottled up emotions, mm -hmm. process those experiences without judgment. It's like having a conversation with yourself. It is. Right. right. 
getting all those thoughts and feelings out of your head and onto paper. Yeah. And it can be really eye-opening to see those things written down. Yeah. It is. It's like you're observing them from an outsider's perspective almost. Exactly. Yeah. And sometimes it can be helpful to write from the perspective of your inner child, you know. Oh, interesting. Ask yourself, what is that child feeling? What do they need? Wow. What messages did they receive that might still be impacting me today? I, I love that idea. Yeah, it's like yeah. giving that younger version of yourself a chance to be heard, mm -hmm. you know, to be understood. Yeah. And it's about connecting with that part of yourself that might still be carrying those wounds. And, you know, sometimes connecting with that inner child, it requires a different approach. Okay. That's where mindfulness and meditation come in. Yeah. These practices can help you become more aware of your thoughts and feelings without judgment. Yeah. It's about creating that space between the thought and the reaction. Right, like hitting the pause button. Exactly. Before reacting on autopilot. Yeah, instead of letting those old patterns dictate your behavior. Right. Mindfulness gives you the opportunity to choose a different response. So you can respond from a place of understanding and yeah. self-compassion. Yeah. Rather than from that place of hurt or fear. Exactly. That might stem from those past experiences. And, you know, I'm starting to see how all of these tools kind of work together. Yeah. Therapy provides guidance. Mm -hmm. Journaling offers clarity yeah. and mindfulness. It creates space for conscious choices. It's like building a toolkit. It is. Yeah, for healing and growth. Yeah, exactly. But what about those who struggle to express themselves through words? Sure. Is there is there a way to, to tap into those emotions through other channels? Well, creative expression can be incredibly powerful, especially when words feel inadequate. Yeah, sometimes words just aren't enough not. to express the complexity of what we're feeling. Yes. It's like those emotions need a different outlet. They do. A way to be expressed without the constraints of language. And your creative expression allows you to connect with your inner child in a very playful, non-threatening way. I love that. It's about tapping into that sense of wonder and curiosity that we often lose touch with as adults. So we've got therapy, journaling, mindfulness, creative expression. Mm-hmm. Anything else we can add to this healing toolkit? One more powerful technique I want to mention is affirmations. Okay, what are those? So these are positive statements that you repeat to yourself. Okay. Consciously choosing to replace those negative beliefs that you might have internalized as a child. How does that work? It sounds almost too simple. It might sound simple, but it's actually based on the principle of neuroplasticity, okay. which is the brain's ability to change and adapt. Right. So by repeatedly exposing yourself to positive statements, yeah. you're essentially rewiring your brain to focus on the positive rather than the negative. So you're creating new neural pathways, new ways of thinking and feeling about yourself. Exactly. Okay, what are some examples of affirmations that might be helpful on this healing journey? Well, you know, if you're struggling with feelings of unworthiness that might stem from those childhood experiences, mm -hmm. you might repeat affirmations like, I am worthy of love and belonging, or I am enough just as I am. I like that. You know, if you're dealing with feelings of insecurity or self-doubt, you might use affirmations like, I am strong and capable. Yeah. I trust my own intuition and judgment. This is where it gets really interesting because we're not just talking about healing past wounds. We're talking about creating a new, more positive self-image. Exactly. And that shift in self-perception. Yeah. It can have a ripple effect throughout your life. It can. Influencing your relationships, yeah. your career choices, even your overall sense of well-being. So we've explored a variety of tools and techniques, therapy, journaling, mindfulness, creative expression, affirmations. Mm -hmm. Each one offers a different pathway to healing and growth. Uh -huh. But, you know, what about forgiveness? We mm -hmm. touched on it earlier. We did. But how do we how do we actually forgive our parents? Yeah. Especially when those wounds run deep. Mm -hmm. How do we move from understanding to actual forgiveness? That's such an important question. It is. And it's one that deserves a deeper dive. You know, forgiveness is a complex and multi-layered process. Yeah. And it's not something that happens overnight. Right. It requires empathy, compassion, a willingness to see things from a different perspective. Yeah. And it can be one of the most challenging, mm -hmm. but also one of the most liberating steps Absolutely. on this healing journey. So before we move on to that, okay. let's recap what we've covered so far. All right. So we've talked about the importance of acknowledging the injustice, feeling those raw emotions, then shifting to appreciating the strength it took to survive those experiences. Mm. We've explored some practical tools like 
therapy, journaling, mindfulness, creative expression, affirmations, yeah. each offering a unique way to connect with and heal your inner child. Right. And we touched on the complexities of forgiveness, recognizing that it's a process, not a destination. It's amazing how much ground we've covered just now. It is, isn't it? And I can already feel the shift in energy, like, like moving from a place of feeling stuck and overwhelmed mm. to a sense of possibility and empowerment. That's the beauty of this process. Yeah. It's not just about addressing the past. Yeah, yeah. It's about creating a brighter future. Mm -hmm. It's about reclaiming your power, embracing your true self, and living a life that's authentic and fulfilling. And that's a journey worth taking. Welcome back to the deep dive. We've been talking about this process for healing the inner child. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but I'm feeling so much lighter. Oh, absolutely. It's amazing how powerful just acknowledging those experiences can be. Yeah, it really feels like we're shedding those old layers, mm -hmm. making room for something new. Yeah. But I think it's important to remember that even with all these tools and insights, change doesn't happen overnight, right? Well, for sure. It's a process. Like any journey, right. there will be bumps along the way. Yeah. Some days it'll feel like you're making great strides. Mm. And then other days, those old patterns might creep back in. Absolutely. There's no, you know perfect linear path yeah, yeah. to healing. Exactly. So it's about being patient with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And embracing the ups and downs. Yeah. The key is to just keep showing up for yourself. Yeah. Even on those days when it feels challenging. Yeah. It's about remembering your commitment to healing mm. and choosing to take those steps, no matter how small, towards mm. a better future. And that brings us back to that powerful message from the source. The most important thing is to have a map for inner growth and the willingness to take those steps. I love that. Me too. It really does boil down to that. Yeah. Having the tools and the willingness to use them. And you know what strikes me is that this entire process is about reclaiming your power. Oh, absolutely. It's like we've been handing over our power to those past experiences, allowing them to define us. Mm -hmm. And this process is about taking that power back. Yeah, recognizing that you have a choice. Right. And how you respond to those experiences. Exactly. You can choose to remain trapped in the pain of the past. Yeah. Or you can choose to embrace a narrative of healing and growth and self-compassion. And that choice is available to us every single day. It is. It's about those small conscious decisions to show up for ourselves, mm -hmm. to practice the tools that we've been discussing, and to keep moving forward on this journey of self-discovery. As we wrap up this deep dive. Yeah. I want to leave you with a question to ponder. Okay. What is one small action you can take today to nurture your inner child and embark on this healing journey? It could be anything, right? It could be. Like uh, writing down a few affirmations, yeah. revisiting a joyful childhood memory, mm. or even just taking a few minutes to sit in silence and connect with that younger version of yourself. Remember, healing is not a destination. It's a continuous process of growth and self-discovery. Mm -hmm. And you deserve to experience the freedom and the joy that comes from healing those old wounds. Yeah. And embracing the fullness of who you truly are. Thank you so much for joining us on this deep dive into healing the inner child. It's been a pleasure. We hope you've gained some insights and are feeling inspired to embark on your own journey of healing and self-discovery.